Hello, I'm Robert Spano. I'm music director of the Atlanta Symphony Orchestra and the Aspen Music Festival and School. I'm really excited to be here in Nashville this week conducting a concert of Sibelius, his fifth symphony, a wonderful piece of a living American composer, Michael Gandolfi, which comes from his garden of cosmic speculation. And this is the garden of the senses from that work. And Simon Turczewski, who is just an amazing pianist, is joining us to do Rachmaninoff's third piano concerto. There's a whole mythos that's grown up around Rachmaninoff's third piano concerto because of its just Olympian challenge in, in its difficulty. Of course, there was the movie Shine, and then there's the fact that it's on many concerto competition lists, and it's a daunting task to play. The amazing thing is that a pianist like Todopchewski, and there are a few others in the world, overcome those hurdles so marvelously that we forget just how difficult it is. Because at the same time, it is a athletic challenge for the pianist. It's also a profound musical statement and a real emotional musical journey, which I think uh, supersedes its technical difficulty. And we're so lucky to have an artist who, who really overcomes those difficulties and brings us the music unencumbered by the inherent challenge. Among the many reasons I'm excited to finally uh, be able to work with the Nashville Symphony, it's my first time, uh, is the wonderful work that the Nashville Symphony has done with living American composers. I too have been dedicated to that work throughout my life and Michael Gandolfi is a composer who I've worked with for decades now and admire tremendously. This work, which does come from the larger Garden of Cosmic Speculation, was inspired by an actual garden in Scotland that was created by Charles Jenks, the great architectural critic. And the garden is full of uh, statuary, but also plant life that represents various concepts in the sciences, in physics in particular. This particular piece of Michael's is inspired by the part of the larger garden, which is called the Garden of the Senses. So each movement is related to one of the five senses, but then there is the sixth sense, uh, which Michael does so brilliantly. He takes a Bach chorale. In fact, every movement in the Garden of the Senses is inspired by a movement of Bach. And in the Garden of the Senses for Intuition, uh, the sixth sense, Michael takes a Bach chorale and has it played at two different rates of speed at the same time. So he thought of that as symbolic of both precognition and the ability to travel back into the past as we're hearing the same music unfold at two different rates. It's, it's actually a wonderfully hypnotic and kind of surreal experience, that movement. But we also have sight and smell and touch and taste, and uh, all of those are inspired by Bach in this case. People often ask me, what will orchestral music, classical music, look like in 30, 40, 50 years? And I have no idea. But what excites me, especially as an educator and working at Aspen, where I encounter 635 incredibly talented young musicians every summer, is that they're going to create it. And really our job, my generation's job, is to pass on the beauty of this art form to that generation. And they're going to envision things I know that we can't see right now. And to me, that's one of the most exciting things about the future is that it's unknown. And what better exploration could there be? What's gratifying about the scariness of such an adventure is that the brilliant minds and talents among the young generation that's coming into this art form is inspiring and staggering.